Good day. So let's build up from our previous lesson on the general antiderivative of a function by looking at some examples. Let's start with my function f of x equals 6 times x raised to 4. And let's start our discussion by recalling the power rule na ang derivative ng x raised to n ay equals sa n times x raised to n minus 1. Let's also recall that if we take the derivative of a constant times a function, pwede natin ilabas muna yung constant na k, no? But before natin kunin yung derivative ng function natin. So to restate that, the derivative of a constant times a function equals siya sa constant times the derivative of the function. Pwede natin unahin muna yung differentiation. Now, yung magiging approach natin dito is yung given natin na 6 times x raised to 4, siya yung derivative at hinahanap natin yung anti-derivative na nagko-correspond sa kanya. So, if you look at our power rule, siya yung n times x raised to n minus 1. So, let's identify kung ano yung magko-correspond sa n. Take a look at the exponent 4. Yan yung n minus 1. So, n minus 1 is equal to 4. That means n is equal to 5. So, meaning kailangan natin ng coefficient na 5 sa x raised to 4. Para makuha natin yung anti-derivative niya, na x raised to n or x raised to the fifth power. Kaso 6 yung nasa unahan niya, hindi 5. So what we'll do is we'll rewrite yung function natin na instead na 6 times x raised to 4, para ma-introduce yung 5, we'll write it as 6 times 5 times x raised to 4 and then divide natin siya by 5 para hindi magbabago yung value niya. And then since alam natin na yung coefficients, yung k, pwede mo siyang ilabas pasok sa differentiation, Titignan na lang natin yung antiderivative ni 5 times x raised to 4. Tapos idadagdag natin doon yung 6 over 5 pagkatapos. So we're basically done. Sulat na lang natin na the antiderivative of 6 times x raised to 4 or f of x is equal to 6 over 5 times x raised to the fifth power. Siyempre plus c yung ating constant of integration. We'll highlight this by boxing our final answer and I invite you to check kung tama yan, by taking the derivative of 6 over 5 times x raised to the 5th power plus a constant, and derivative ba nun ay 6 times x raised to 4. So please do that check and balik tayo sa video pagkatapos. So for our next exercise, for our next example, let's take a look at the antiderivative of f of x equals e raised to 4 times x. Before we proceed, I want to introduce a new notation. And this notation will take the place of writing the general antiderivative of. And here we will use this symbol. This is called the integral symbol. Para siyang letter S na in stretch natin. And then we'll write it in such a way na yung function na hinahanapan natin na antiderivative. Ilalagay natin siya between the integral symbol and dx. For now, we'll treat dx muna as a symbol. And later on, we'll assign a meaning sa kanya kung bakit siya dx. In any case, if we see a function na nasa loob ng integral symbol tsaka ng dx, ang basa natin sa kanya ay the general antiderivative of the function. So here, the function is f of x. So ang basa sa kanya ay the general antiderivative of f of x. So let's rewrite that using our new notation. Now before we proceed, let's recall something from grade 11, from math 5. Na ang derivative with respect to x ng e raised to u ay equal sa e raised to u times du over dx or the derivative of u. So, in-apply natin yung chain rule. Of course, you have to keep in mind that u here is a function of x. Now, this is pretty suggestive, no? Kasi kung titignan natin yung given, it's e raised to 4x, tapos e raised to u. So, it sort of tells us that we could write yung u as 4x, or pwede natin isulat yung u natin as equal to 4x. And that will make the derivative of u, du over dx, be equal to 4 so, ang approach natin for now is tinitignan natin yung given natin as the derivative. So, ang given sa atin ay e raised to 4x. Tapos, sabi dun sa rule na nirecall natin, ang derivative ng e raised to u ay e raised to u times the derivative of u. So, yung given natin, kulang siya nung part na derivative of u, yung 4. So, what we'll do is try to rewrite the given para malagyan natin siya ng du over dx na equal sa 4. So, the general antiderivative of e raised to 4x, pwede natin siyang i-rewrite na, na general antiderivative of e raised to 4x times 4. Pinasok ko yung 4 na derivative of u. And then, para hindi magbago yung value ng function natin, we'll need to divide everything by 4 or multiply 1 fourth sa unahan. Like that. Now, since yung nasa loob ng integral symbol and dx, 
yung 4e to the 4x, derivative siya ng e raised to 4x or e raised to u. At this point, dapat may plus c na tayo. Pero hindi ko muna nilagay, later na lang. We're basically done. Because now, we could say that the general antiderivative of yung e to the 4x natin, this is equal to 1 over 4 times e raised to 4x plus a constant. Let's highlight our final answer with the box. And please, before we proceed, pause natin yung video at this point and check na pag kinuha niya yung derivative ng 1 fourth times e raised to 4x plus a constant, ang makukuha natin ay yung given natin. So let's do the check. Okay, so let's compare our answers. Ang derivative ng 1 over 4 e to the 4x plus c. This will be the derivative of 1 fourth times e to the 4x. At confirm na tama. For a third example, we want to find the general antiderivative of 3 sin x minus 4 cos x. And let's recall yung derivatives ng trig functions natin. Ang derivative ng sin x ay cos x. Ang derivative ng cos x ay negative sin x. Now, since ang derivatives ng sums ay equivalent sa sums ng derivatives, for now, it sort of makes sense no, na ang antiderivatives ng sums ay sums din ng antiderivatives. Later, we'll see kung bakit totoo yun. But let's take advantage of that property for now. And let's write na ang antiderivative ng 3 sin x minus 4 cos x ay equal sa antiderivative ng 3 sin x minus antiderivative ng 4 cos x. Now, pwede natin ilabas yung coefficient, yung 3 at yung 4. So, this could be 3 times the antiderivative of sin x, which is negative cos x. Kasi nga, ang derivative ng cos x ay negative sin x. So, ang antiderivative ng positive sin x ay negative cos x plus a constant. Kasi hiniwalay natin yung antiderivatives eh. Minus 4 times the antiderivative of cos which is sin, kasi ang derivative ng sin ay cos So, negative 4 times sin x plus another constant, c2. Then, let's distribute yung coefficients natin. We'll get negative 3 cos x plus 3c1 minus 4 sin x minus 4 c2. Then, let's group together lahat ng may functions na part ng may x. We'll have negative 3 cos x minus 4 sin x plus 3c1 minus 4c2. Now, remember, yung constant na ina natin, yung constant of integration, it could be any constant. So, si 3c1 at si negative 4c2, these are just constants pareho, which we could combine to form one big or small constant para isang constant na lang ilalagay natin. So, ang final answer natin ay negative 3 cos x minus 4 sin x plus c representing na all the possible constants na mabubuo mo sa 3c1 minus 4c2. This are constant of integration. We highlight our answer by putting it in a box. Again, I would invite you to pause this video and check na pag kinuha natin yung derivative ni negative 3 cos x minus 4 sin x plus c, makukuha natin yung original given natin. So, yan. Just please make sure that you did the check yourself. Ilagay ko nalang dito to remind us. Although, hindi ko nagagawin. For our next item, we want to find the general antiderivative of the square root of x times the quantity x squared plus 2x plus 1. Our first step will be to expand yung function sa loob. And, i-rewrite re natin si square root of x no, as x raised to 1 half. And then, we will distribute it to all the terms inside the parenthesis. So, we'll get x raised to 2 plus 1 half or x raised to 5 halves plus 2 times x raised to 3 halves plus x raised to 1 half. Let's also recall the power rule na diniscuss natin sa first item kanina kasi gagamitin na naman natin siya sa item na to na ang derivative ng x raised to k. I used k here instead of n kasi we're not restricting ourselves to counting numbers. Actually, k can be any rational number. So this is equal to k times x raised to k minus 1. Now, since alam na natin yung notation for the general antiderivative, i rewrite natin yung power rule as the power rule for general antidifferentiation. The general antiderivative of x raised to n is equal to x raised to n plus 1 all over n plus 1. Siyempre plus a constant of integration. Let's take a moment to look at it na pag kinuha natin yung derivative ng x raised to n plus 1, yung power, ibababa natin by 1, so magiging n, tapos yung n plus 1, gagawin natin coefficient ni x. Tapos magka-cancel out siya dun sa denominator. Now, I'm not writing it here, hindi ko muna na-include, but this rule will fail if your exponent is negative 1. Kasi magkakaroon ka ng 0 na denominator. Pero we'll see later, no, that x raised to negative 1, it will have its own 
anti-derivative. Hindi lang siya nagpa-follow nitong power rule. Let's rewrite our problem as the general anti-derivative of x raised to 5 halves plus 2x raised to 3 halves plus x raised to 1 half. So applying the power rule for each term, we'll get x raised to 5 halves plus 1 over 5 halves plus 1 times 2 times x raised to 3 halves plus 1 over 3 halves plus 1 plus x raised to 1 half plus 1 over 1 half plus 1 plus our constant of integration. Simplifying the sums, we'll get x raised to 7 halves all over 7 halves plus 2 times x raised to 5 halves all over 5 halves plus x raised to 3 halves all over 3 halves plus our constant of integration. Then it's just a matter of rewriting the, the denominators as fractional coefficients. So our final answer is 2 over 7 times x raised to 7 halves plus 4 over 5 kasi may coefficient na tayo na 2 times x raised to 5 halves plus 2 thirds times x raised to 3 halves plus our constant of integration. We'll highlight this answer with a box. And again, I invite you to pause the video and double check na pag kinuha nyo yung derivative nung result natin, makukuha natin, maybe not yung original, no? But at least yung x raised to 5 halves plus 2 times x raised to 3 halves plus x raised to 1 half. Okay. So for our fifth example, we want to find the general antiderivative of cosine x over sine squared x. We'll start by recalling a few of the derivatives na naturo sa atin ng grade 11. So derivative ng sine ay cosine. I'm using here yung chain rule na form. So derivative with respect to x ng sine u ay cosine u times derivative of u. And derivative with respect to x of cosine u is negative sine u times d over dx. Ang derivative ng tangent ay secant squared. Ang derivative ng cotangent ay negative cosecant squared. Ang derivative ni secant ay tangent secant or secant tangent. Ang derivative ng cosecant ay negative cosecant cotangent. So for all these cases, we are taking the trigonometric function of u where u is a function of x. Tapos yung derivative with respect to x. Kaya yung result natin sa kanan lahat naka-chain rule. Now let's take a look again at our given. Yung cosine x over sine squared x, we could rewrite it na cosine x over sine x times 1 over sine x. And cosine x over sine x is cotangent x. And 1 over sine x is cosecant x. So we could write our given as the general antiderivative of cosine x over sine squared x. Sulat na natin siya as the general antiderivative of cotangent x cosecant x. Now looking at our list of derivatives, makita natin na ang derivative ng cosecant u ay negative cosecant u cotangent u. What we have here is cotangent x cosecant x. So, ang anti-derivative niya ay negative cosecant x. Siyempre, plus our constant of integration. We highlight our final answer with a box. And you should do the same when you submit your answers. And this should be our last problem for this video. But there are more videos to watch. So, I'll see you sa next video at salamat sa pakikinig.